A year after enduring a Nazi bombing blitz and winning the Battle of Britain, Prime Minister Winston Churchill boarded a ship in Her Majesty's Navy, bound for the other side of the Atlantic. It was in one of our newest battleships, HMS Prince of Wales, largely responsible for the sinking of the Bismarck, that Mr. Churchill sailed to his meeting with President Roosevelt. He hoped to coax the Americans into joining the military effort. But while that didn't happen, when the conference closed on August 12, 1941, Churchill and FDR had firmly cemented the relationship that would eventually be responsible for winning the war. From the beginning of the battle that started the Second World War, the American people staunchly agreed with lawmakers that the United States should remain neutral. FDR thought the U.S. should consider fighting on the Allied side, especially after France fell and the U.K. was left alone to stand in Germany's path to America. But instead, the U.S. settled for tacitly supporting countries fighting fascist Germany by providing military and humanitarian aid. In August of 1940, Nazi troops readied for an invasion. Hitler and his generals feverishly drafted their plans for the conquest of Britain. And after surviving weeks of German barrages, Churchill desperately wanted to get America into the war. With that in mind, he sailed for the coast of Newfoundland in August 1941 for a secret meeting with FDR that became known as the Atlantic Conference. Mr. Churchill leaves to go aboard the United States cruiser Augusta, in which Mr. Roosevelt, supposed to be on a fishing trip in his yacht Potomac, has come to the appointed place. Aboard the USS Augusta, the two men shook hands for the first time as leaders of two world superpowers. They meet, and Mr. Churchill hands the president a letter from the king. The two greatest leaders of the freedom-loving world are ready for the historic conference. For four days, Churchill and Roosevelt discussed America's place in the war and what the world should look like when the fighting was over. Both had wish lists that were left unfulfilled but they did string together a non-binding pact that brought the nations closer together. The Atlantic Charter laid out eight points both countries would support when the fighting stopped. They included things like agreeing not to seek territorial expansion, loosening up international trade, and setting up work and labor standards across the world. The two leaders also agreed to restore any country occupied by an invading force during the war. Churchill left without drawing the U.S. into the war, and Roosevelt had wanted the politics of the conference to encourage Americans to join the effort. Neither happened that day, but the relationship was secured for when the U.S. was thrust into the fight. Congress declare that since the unprovoked and dastardly attack by Japan on Sunday, December 7, 1941, a state of war has existed between the United States and the Japanese Empire. Four days after the U.S. entered the fray, Hitler backed Japan and declared war on the Americans. From there, Roosevelt and Churchill coordinated the Allied assault to win the world back. Their alliance helped bolster the Allied cause, and their faces became a sign of hope to those who had succumbed to the Axis expansion plans. It was a winning combination that began in the Atlantic when two strong-willed men set a course for victory and the world beyond war. <laughs> 